You're now listening to Signed In Private Chat featuring Alan Wake, recorded on June 5th, 2010. Find us online at signedinpodcast.com. Is it private? Yeah. I'm Jeremy Superfro33. <laughs> I'm Greg Prof Dresser. <laughs> and I'm Sean Shonix. And this is all about Alan Wake. Yes. Hey, hey, you. Get out of here. This is private. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking to. Is this in your head? <laughs> to the person who is listening in. This is private. All right. Uh, well, this, <laughs> this is, is all... just the three of us talking, right? <laughs> this no, is all about recording this, right? <laughs> Alan Wake. <laughs> and there will be spoilers. So there's your one and only warning. Yes. Yes. There will be spoilers in them, there are podcasts. I guess there's two warnings. <laughs> Uh, we're we're going to be talking about everything at length, um, or as much as we want to, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Story wise, plot wise, gameplay wise, yeah. whatever we want to cover. I'm not going to say anything. So, <laughs> don't blame us if anything gets ruined for you and you're listening. Sucker. Hey, you should have. You should. If if I'm on private chat talking about Alan Wake, <laughs> you should have finished Alan Wake. By now. <laughs> That's, true. That's all I got to say. That's a good point, Sean. I mean, so uh, Sean is your litmus test. So we've all finished the game. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it's a little piece of paper you stick in water. <laughs> oh, it's like a science test, lesson up to in test the if it's acidic or basic. Oh, nerds! Ding. All right, so Alan Wake, gents, yes. we've all completed the game. Yeah. Correct. What do you guys? You are correct. On that? I liked it. Yeah, I Feelings liked it. In whole, I, I thought it was just. I thought it was a really good game. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, not. I don't know, really good, but it's still a good game. Mm-hmm. Um, story wise. Um, We'll get to the ending probably throughout the show. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that will be talked about, but just presentation wise, I just I thought it was good. Admittedly, it was a mixed bag throughout. There are parts, mm-hmm. there are things that I liked and things that I didn't, not hated necessarily, but w- yeah. would be frustrating to me. Yeah. Um, but the overall package was very enjoyable for me. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm glad that I played it. What did yeah. you guys end up feeling about the uh, the element of finding the manuscript pages and like the story progression of that, like learning like. Some pieces from the past, like yeah. something that's going to come right up or something in the future. Uh, I really love that element. Um, it, times in particular, like with Barry, mm-hmm. um, in particular in the town. And you kind of like, you, when he's left like on the phone. Yeah. And you're like, well, what's going on? And so you find that page where he's on the phone and like he hears like the window crash. I'm like, well, Barry's in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Like, cause, but I'm finding that out through the manuscript page yes. that I'm finding out, which is a really neat storytelling element. Some of them were really nice like that. And some mm-hmm. of them, I, you know, I would just kind of sk- yeah, yeah. skim real quickly and be like, okay. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever. I really like the fact that they had him narrate the <laughs> manuscript pages, which made it really easy for me to like. You didn't want to read it? Not really. <laughs> I'm not a big fan. <laughs> Well, you know, it's just more voice acting, too. I yeah. mean, so, I mean, there's inflection in those readings. It's yeah. not just, you yeah. know, them reading the page or you reading it in your head. Yeah. You're actually getting the involvement of the character doing it as well, mm. which is neat. Now, now, when you first talked about the game, Alan Wake, mm-hmm. and you, we were talking about manuscript pages, you yes. had a concern because some of them are only available in, in Nightmare. Nightmare difficulty. Yeah. Yes. And as I talked about on last week's show, um, Nightmare is not that bad if you run away from, like, half the dudes. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, um, I can confirm that those pages are very peripheral. Okay. So usually they're cool. they're about very side characters. Um, I don't know if it's okay to spoil these for you. Yeah. No, okay. That's fine. Okay. I'm fine. I wasn't sure I'm if you're playing... ever, ever going back to I'm not going to play it again. I never confirmed that with you. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, like like uh, if you listen to the radio. I heard the warning at the beginning. You can say whatever <laughs> you, you said want. The warning. I did. If you listen to the radio shows, there's that one where the dude calls in talking about how his dog ran off into the woods. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one page is like, you know, what happened to that dog? Aww. Like from the dog's perspective. Okay. Uh, there's one that has Barry in the, in the diner first meeting Rose. Okay. Um, you know, uh, some of them have. Uh, Lyrics from the songs, the 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 children okay. of the old god songs. Cool. Um, and yeah, yeah. I mean, they're these peripheral things that are are nice elements that that again enrich the area, but but they're not essential to the story or okay. anything like that. Which is, I know you were concerned about. Yeah, I still hate that element. I still hate that they have a piece of the game that's in your face during the regular play that mm-hmm. says you can't see this unless you yeah. play it on harder. Um, I don't like that element. Sure. But you know, t- I'm glad it's not important things. Right. It's just peripheral, like you said. Yeah. Um, but back to the, I, I love the way that they like I love some of the foreshadowing and like reading some of those pages yeah. and the thing hasn't happened yet yeah. but like you kind of get that realization when the thing starts happening and you're like this is what it was talking about yeah. and that was like an episode ago and I don't even remember hardly mm-hmm. but 
And this would play into the to the scripted parts as well, what with the FBI agent. Okay, let's yes, talk. Yes. Can we talk about the FBI agent? Then let's talk about him because, because I what don't deal understand what the hell his deal is. Right. Well, they leave it that way, now, though, I think. Now, see, this is, this is the, the dangerous minefield that you get when you write a story about stories. We were talking about this. About yeah. stories yes. and things like that. You start, sometimes you can fold over so many times that it starts to come apart. And so, you know, I started thinking of justifications for it. I'm like, well, maybe Alan wrote really sh- shitty characters because, uh-huh. you know, he's, he's being cliche or he just needs to write something in there. Because he talks about how, you know, oh, in a, in a horror story, you, you have to make the, the hero almost die. You can't make it easy right. for them, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Um, and I'm like, well, is that it? And then I'm like, is that good enough to make this goofy character who I, every time he's on the screen, I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, exactly. Well, that was the thing that when when I first played the game, I felt like this was such a TV show. Yeah. Because he was so over the top cliche. Yeah. He was your FBI. Yeah. You just shoot first, ask questions later. Right. Um, I And like, especially throwing in those little comments about calling him every different writer that he could think of. Yeah. Right. right. Um, Th- that was funny. I actually yeah. enjoyed that. But I think that that's... Did the, they mention Stephen King in this game he, at all? He did. He called him Stephen I King. I only heard it like 14 times. <laughs> Jesus, seriously. He better have gotten paid something for this game. <laughs> it was a total... Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no. But that's... I, I, Because that's when I became thinking that this FBI guy is just a, a character. Yeah. yeah. Just a character. A I, lame character in a show. A lame character in a show that was written in there. And that, that's what's led me... Yeah, the drinking problem. Mm-hmm. He's, yeah. you know, itchy on the trigger figure. He's like... He's all over, like, Alan. And I suppose... And I yeah. suppose Night Springs kind of reinforces that. Because the characters in the show, Night Springs, on the, in the game were kind of of, of that that vein. I think it's just the fact that he's the only one that it just seems so weird. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Like he's the only guy at least that was noticeable to me. Well, you know, and Well, I guess Rose maybe. Well, Rose, well, Rose, Rose was, was a, a fan. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but she was very cliché. Yeah, well. yeah. But we get down I mean, we were talking about this uh Sean that it, it also becomes a problem with with a game like this where it's never really clear on what's going on with the writing, mm-hmm. like what's leading to what, what's real, what's necessarily on the page, mm-hmm. or what you're really seeing. And so there becomes a problem with that where they can really go any way they want with this yeah. Yeah. and say that he's an element of this story or say that he's you know anything else. They can really just right. make it up as they go along right. and, and, and retcon it yeah. in right. the second game you know, and say, oh, well, his, this was written this way, so that's why he yeah. was like this. Um, so there's really no way to guess necessarily what his motivation is. Yeah. You don't ever really get what his motivation is. He, here's where it really bit me, especially with the FBI agent. Is, and again, the danger of writing a story about stories so explicitly, mm-hmm. yeah. about writing so explicitly. At one point in the game, he starts talking about how it's so important to have good characters. And I'm like, what about the FBI agent? <laughs> Hello, game. You're kind of calling yourself out here. And I'm like, and, you know, maybe, again, you know, maybe you can come back and say, oh, that was ironic or something maybe like doing that. doing it on purpose. But that's definitely not apparent in the game. I yeah. mean, the, the game has a, a very serious attitude towards everything else that mm-hmm. that sort of tongue-in-cheek-ishness isn't really coming through for me, at least. Right. And uh, what do you guys think about the, the therapist, the Hartman character? Yeah. I, I, I didn't really... He was the bad guy, I mean, obviously, from the beginning. They they set up a lot of weird stuff with him though too with having those people that are obviously artistic. Yeah. So was he trying to tap into mm-hmm. them getting to create? Yeah. Yes. And so then does that open up the other aspect that I was wondering about? Like, do those other people that are there? So like the Anderson brothers, um, like with their music stuff, has yeah. that stuff come to life before, based on them using that, no. that dark power? What was it from? Something in the game. Well, something were, in the game gives you more story about that. Well, those and, guys were drinking the, that moonshine that they made, and yeah. they were like using water from the lake. Yeah, and that was causing them to like go crazy, quote unquote. Right. But then there was also things in their mix that were really like veiled them really running around with powers. Mm-hmm. So I like this whole thread of maybe that the things have come real before, like their songs have become kind of real. Well, but here, I don't here's know the deal: that is the that they nobody was nobody it. was strong enough since um, Tom, Zane, Zane, Thomas yeah. Zane. Um, nobody, and because no, none of them were writers. Okay. Uh, there was something, maybe it was one of the tapes that you listened to in his office See, or I something missed like those. that. So I don't know what those were. Except th- those were mostly with Alan's wife. So okay. I, I can't, I know there was something in the game where the, the psychiatrist was talking about how, you know, 
um, that painting guy was starting to reflect some of the things, but he wasn't strong. You know, he he wasn't creating things; he was just reflecting things. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and and yeah, and I think it really took, takes that writer in order to create enough for the darkness to kind of manifest itself, which right. is why they latched on to Alan. But hmm. uh, but yeah, that was definitely there. I my my first question when I first started playing the game is why on earth would it- a woman that's deathly afraid of the dark want to go to a cabin on the lake. Yeah, that was a little. That well, was she obviously took him there for the the therapist guy. Oh, right? wait. yeah, because she was involved in that whole thing. She was trying to get him motivated yeah. again to write. Yeah, so that's she was true. trying. So she well, set why not him up, stay basically. in town? Sure. Well, yeah, I know. I don't. Well, I mean, she went into that and the, she had that whole room set up in there. But also, she might not have went into town because it might have been arranged by Hartman. I yeah. mean, do we know that? I I don't really know because. Hartman obviously wanted the writer to be there, yeah. yeah. And she was bringing him there to like talk to this dude mm-hmm. and to basically sneak in therapy for yeah. him and get him to write again. So maybe it was suggested at that time that yeah. hey, you should stay here at this place that doesn't exist. I guess. Well, no, he was, they were going to stay at a cabin, <laughs> but but, but uh, Stucky was in the bathroom, and that's when the dark lady. That's right. She handed it off and yeah, intercepted. That's true. So they went they went to a place that didn't exist. Stucky yeah, was right. stuck in the bathroom. <laughs> that's that's absolutely true. <laughs> that was the one turning point for me on the game where I was wondering what the hell was like really really going on is when they went when he woke up at the at the clinic or wherever that was where yeah. all the, the that was like the other, missing week right yeah, that yeah. you started playing at yeah. that point no no or the missing learned. week was when he wakes up in the car because it's a week later yeah but this is when he, this is showing what happened during that missing week right during the missing week when he wakes up in that hospital wasn't no, it? he finds that out when he's drinking the moonshine, oh, you have yeah. the, uh... and then he gets caught by the FBI agent. When he wakes up, yeah. he's, he's fallen in the he's fallen in the lake. It's kind of convoluted, so yeah. it's, a little it's bit. hard to work. He's through. fallen in the lake, and then he's pulled out, and then you're supposed to be like, "Oh no, it was all a dream." And right. I'm like, "This is not a dream. Yeah. <laughs> no, this dude is pulling a sham on me." That's right. Well, they showed that one. There's one room in there that had the the Night Springs Xbox game in the Xbox console, but over on their oh, because that was board, the game designer. Yeah, yeah, on the racer board, then it showed you like. It was a, part of the a, garden map. Yeah, which I thought was just insane and fantastic and brought too. you into the game. And I think that's what really made me like, this is a game that I've got to think outside of the box and totally be like, there's other things going on here other mm-hmm. than this guy trying to solve the mystery of why his, or capture his wife or save his wife. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought that was, I, that was brilliant. That there was, was some really, really neat fun. things to it. I, I don't understand. You mentioned Alice being afraid of the dark. And seriously, she's like a four-year-old. Yeah, when the lights go out. I seriously, seriously think the, I the whole point her. of that is to introduce the clicker. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, because, but it's a little over because, the top. No, I know, and it and it comes really bluntly. <laughs> yeah, is the thing. She all of a sudden acts like a child. Like the lights. I mean, go out people have rational fears to that extent. I, oh yeah, I, oh, yeah. I, I understand that. Yeah. I don't find those rational. <laughs> That's a it, crazy person. Irrational is what I said. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I heard rational. <laughs> Those like, are not, not rational, rational fears. <laughs> yes, she has a legitimate reason to be afraid of the dark. What What are you talking about? Well, she does. I, I played the game. I know, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> She'll get you. <laughs> exactly. It will grab you. <laughs> no, yeah. No, but I mean, it, it is over the top. I, it was just the introduction of it which seemed really blunt, and it feel, felt like, okay, we need to get this out now. Yeah. You know, that yeah. was the only problem I had with it. Yeah. Um. So also, uh, the farm scene. I guess it's probably the most memorable for me. Oh, yeah. What did you guys think of that? I loved it. Fighting on the stage, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. That was an awesome song. It was. That song was great. It was. I mean, it was totally a Sabbath song is what it sounded like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was crazy. I totally listened to it in the soundtrack because you can go listen to it. Which is great. Which I is love that. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It's a good soundtrack. Although you can't watch the Night Springs episodes. That was the one thing you couldn't read. Oh, that would have been cool. I know, because that's why I wanted to see them a little bit better. Yeah. You know? Because they had the cin- cinematics. The, yeah, they had the regular cinematics. Yeah, and then the soundtrack. You could play all of them. You I could look at the manuscripts. The manuscripts. Yeah. It's, it's funny. Sean and I were talking about that scene, and it's Radio like... Radio was also on that, yes, too. that was which it. I thought Radio was neat. You can't help but think about, like, uh, Left 4 Dead 2, <laughs> with that whole, like, stage scene. Oh, yeah, yeah. And with the end. Mm-hmm. And and we were talking about that being the problem with like a game that you work on for eight years where right. you probably have this idea. Um, but there's probably a lot of people that don't... I mean, there's probably a lot of people playing Alan Wake. There's a ton that know the history of it, but there's probably even more that play the game that aren't aware that it's been in production mm-hmm. for so long. Yeah. And so they play it and they're like, well, it's ripping off Left 4 Dead. Well... Yeah. Probably not. Yeah, but and if so, it's still awesome. It's still awesome. It was the second awesome. time it was around. Great. Yeah, when all that stuff's going off and the song's awesome. Exactly. Those are a lot of fun. And I was just like, when is this going to end? Because these guys keep coming, <laughs> and then something blows up, and I'm like, oh, thank awesome. you. Yeah. I was like, I must have to go through there. But 
Barry became an awesome character. Me too. Yeah, same here. I, I at first I'm like this Joe Pesci wannabe guy. And Joe I'm, Pesci, yes. totally. Yes. Driving me nuts. <laughs> yes. I mean, driving me nuts. And then as the... I'm like, I, seriously? <laughs> as it progressed and progressed, I was like, this guy is awesome. Christmas yeah. lights? Oh, as his bandolier. I or is it, oh. See, I love when you read... And that's, that goes back to the thing when you're going this through the town. This is my eye of Mordor. <laughs> yeah. When you're going through the town and, and you read about the pages where it's like Barry was like, you know, attacking whatever. And yeah. it's like, because I was worried. I was legitimately worried yeah, for him when yeah. I like busted into that room and you read that page. Yeah. yeah. And then so you get the, you know, information about how he was like fighting him back with like, oh, you're going to meet up with him again. He's going to be all badass. Yeah. And he's shooting off that flare and yeah. he shows back up. I like that they gave you like companions like that. No, me too. But at first, but at first, I had the same reaction as Sean. Yeah, I'm right. like, oh my god, this dude is not going to be in the rest of this game, is he? Seriously? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was in the same boat, but he just became very, very likable. So yeah. he's, he's secondary, and they and they changed him. I mean, he went through like an arc, which is yes. you don't get a lot with right. some of those secondary right. characters. And yeah. you and you can see why Alan would like him. Yeah, I think yeah. he is likable. He he comes off as uh, annoying as fr- at first, but you know he does grow on you. At right. least he grew yeah. on me. So and he had the, the I'm uh, sending him cards now. Alan had that nice <laughs> talk where he said Barry he was comfortable making phone calls and making things happen. Yeah, and that's what you know. I thought that was really some really good you know part of the game and character development yeah. throughout, which was awesome. I is those were some really good moments. Mm-hmm. I really liked uh, the moments when you had the partners, like when you had uh, the sheriff chick. Um, yeah, and, and she Barry. was really she was really bland at first. She yeah. grew on me a little bit more, not as much as Barry did, but and I'm talking basically from a sta- uh, gameplay standpoint. Oh, I see. I like it because then I could just yes. like do whatever I wanted, and they were taking Hell care yeah. of people. I would yeah. just shine my nice. flashlight at things. I'm like, shoot them, <laughs> especially on nightmare because I was trying to conserve ammo. It was really nice. Yeah, you I know, agree. that was one big thing about, and I wanted to mention that when we talked about the, the game again. If I could give like a biggest piece of advice, which now everybody listening to this has probably already played, the game, right? It's using your stuff. And I think I heard oh yeah because you like, ditch it after I think the, I heard that on episode. another podcast I was a and that was the biggest that. advice that I could get and I forgot to give it out when mm-hmm. we talked about the game uh, and especially to you guys because you lose everything after each episode yeah I yeah. figured that out after, after the first break, checkpoint but yeah um, and so you know use those flares and use those uh, guns because mm-hmm. and always keep all. always keep one flare on you those yeah. stun grenades are awesome friggin sweet oh yeah <laughs> the flashbangs yeah oh, dude. Geez. Flare just gun melts cool everybody. Too. Yeah. Oh, there's some really that the, that aspect, the fighting aspect too. It was really good too, and using you know bright lights and stuff like that, which is you know it's a little different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And um, again, it adds tension because you're like, I can't kill these things yet until I you know. Yeah. And if you got a bunch of them coming on coming on to you, then you have to figure out what am I going to do to stall them before I can get their their shadows off. Yeah. Right. And it, it was it like it, you know the fight or flight. You know, sometimes you'd have to fight people. Sometimes you just have to run. Mm-hmm. Um, other times was, I really like the game because sometimes I need this is where I'll go through something, especially when I was in the bar and I sent the, the boat through. Mm-hmm. Well, you go around that corner and there's that guy right there every time. And then there's a group right by the stairs. So I'm like, I got to duck past that guy, run, get to that group where they're all around me, hit my flare and get down the steps and get to the light. But then I'm like, I did all that. No, I can't because I can't make it to the light because they're on me by the time I get to yeah. it. So then I had to make my stand like at the bottom. So I bottlenecked them at the steps mm-hmm. and just stayed That's on them right there. That's always very good against the And guys, yeah. like making me change up my gameplay and mm-hmm. making me right, rethink things really kept the game fresh. There was definitely strategy. Moving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And normally I, I, I get frustrated with that stuff, but it really worked with this game just with the tools you have to use. So You mentioned when we talked about it last on the show... Mm-hmm. Um, the town that you go into yes. and you really like that level. And I do too, yeah. because it is, does get really monotonous. And I think when I originally talked about the game, it was, you basically were forest to mountain, forest all the time. Yeah. And then set <laughs> piece, then mountain forest, then set piece. That was yeah. like a big building or whatever, or, you know, yeah. get to the house, get to the mine, get to whatever. Yeah. Um, but then you're just still in the forest all the time. And it's very similar looking. Yeah. Um, and it gets almost a little like, especially because it's dark. And with as long as some of those episodes were, it just got a little like monotonous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it looked beautiful, it's, but it's just a little much. It's a monot- yeah. It's a monotony of just oppressiveness. It's yeah. like it, it, it's a great atmosphere for the game, but if you use it for too long, then mm-hmm. I get irritated at it. Yeah. Right? Right. You know, it stop it stops being tense for me, and it just starts being like. Okay, I want to move on. And I was doing it to myself, like we talked about with running around and trying yes. to find everything in every square As did inch, I. which yeah. I don't think that you're supposed to do or need to do. No, no I think they to. want you to, but you're not Stupid supposed to. Stupid 
thermoses. Yeah, yeah. Once I started finding one of those in the can pyramids, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But it, it seemed like at any time that I would jump off a little cliff where I knew I couldn't get back, I'm like, okay, is this towards the end? Right. You know, right. and then if it didn't happen, I was going over another one. I'm like, okay. It but, just sometimes episodes seem to just be a little bit too. But back to the well, the town, well, that was a really neat thing because you were going through that town mm-hmm. for an extended period of time. Yeah, and it was kind of neat to see everything. Yeah, it was all set up for the parade for a deer fest and so all the that float stuff. That almost runs you over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are awesome like surprise elements like that, like that weren't necessarily scary, and the, even the right off the bat. Plant. Read it right off the bat when you get in that cabin mm-hmm. and like everything kind of just starts going like batshit crazy mm-hmm. yeah. like outside and things are loud like if you have the volume oh, I had the yeah. volume turned up no, quite I, a bit I had so. headphones on so that was probably yeah. awesome because mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know you get the surround sound going and it's like things are just going shit crazy and it's like everything's rattling and that stuff was really neat yeah I like the one where you're in that little or I think it was maybe that same cabin the one where they they have the machine come attack the wasn't it like the bulldozer that pushes it over? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, you're like, talking about like the prologue So part. you're trying yes. to run out, and it's like tipping over. The building's tipping yeah. over, which is really cool. Like, yeah. Those nice. elements were awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I like those a lot. But those are those big set piece moments, too. Mm-hmm. So, I, I like the, That was the same type of moment, like when you were with Barry, and he goes over the cliff in the car. Yes. And he's where you're separated. And um, I was then, I was panicking. I'm like I'm like trying to see him. Yeah, over, yeah. Over the and edge. then he pops a flare, and you're like, okay, okay. And you can see it. Yeah, yeah. And I was like 50 yards back. I'm like, oh shit. And I ran <laughs> up there real fast. <laughs> it's just all those little, just those little things that they put in there. Um, I mean, especially like when you'd open a door and it'd just be nothing but shadow guys coming mm-hmm. at you. And it was like towards the end with Barry again, and he comes and saves the day with his, you know, I have Mordor. And like you walk out and you're like taking guys out, you're like shooting, and you're like, well, why are these guys dying? And then boom, that flash of flare comes up, and you're like, okay, that's why, because Barry comes to save the day. Yeah. Um, but there are so many neat little things involved with that. I just, I don't know. I, 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 it took me a while to get used to the mechanic of keeping my flashlight on until they bursted yeah. and then shoot them. I was like, bam, 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 bam. And then I, I was running out of... I was I'm run, sure. Oh, yeah. I was running out of ammo like something fierce. And then once I realized the gameplay and just really like how to really play it and utilize it, mm-hmm. um, and then the manuscript parts, I just I started really getting just pulled into that, that game. And I think I, that, that's the one thing that really blew my mind about it. It just pulled me into the story, made me really just engrossed in it. I love the disjointed selling, storytelling like yeah. that, where it's like, you know, you get things out of order. Yeah, and I, I the first time when I walked into the garage and he goes into his narration and this place been torn apart, and I'm like, shit, that TV's going to turn on. <laughs> And sure enough, it did because I had read it already. And right, I'm like, right. wow. I'm like, this is really a, a, just a neat aspect to it. What did you guys think of the end game as far as like the last the quote unquote level, the the whole like tornado boss thing? It's uh, this is the same thing. I've talked about this with other story driven games. Your story driven game is not going to have the big, huge blowout ending. It's, it's, I like the tornado. I, I, see, I didn't. I, I thought didn't. it was okay. I, I thought it was not needed. I like it when it took me out the cliff when I went to jump over. I'm like, crap, I got to watch out for that. I was confused why he destroyed the darkness with the clicker and then had to go fight the darkness again as a tornado. Or yeah. was that the other way around? I can't remember the order of it now. No, you, no, you he, fight the tornado first and then to you get to oh, okay. the house. I see, and, okay. And then okay, you never mind. jump in with the clicker. Yeah. Well, and then he it's... had to sacrifice himself. It was like, I couldn't quite figure out what what the end game was necessarily of the story was. well yeah and then they but build in uh, I'm, get, well, I'm getting ahead. my thing about that that boss battle too is it's just so easy it was I found it because you flare, they flare, had flare. like non-stop flares in front of you yeah. yeah not that i want difficult difficult right you know but it was just like i just point a flare and shoot it shoot it shoot it i can yeah. refill all my flares shoot it shoot it shoot it yeah. and it was just like kind of pointless so it just seemed kind of weird like there was no challenge to it yeah i i think it's uh, in and it's a symptom of story driven sorts of games. It's mm-hmm. it's more of a cathartic moment of, you know, yeah. there it's That's done. True. Yeah. You know, rather than huge battle that you've been building up to or something like that. That could potentially be frustrating and take you out of the exactly. final yeah. act of the game. Yeah. Yeah, because to get up to that cliff was a, I mean, you know, you're having buses and, you know, just cars yeah. dropped on you and things like that. Um, not even to mention that I it took me forever to get off that rotating bridge earlier on. <laughs> but never mind on that one. Like you get turned around on that, that thing. Oh, I didn't know it was turning. <laughs> so I went to the end of it, and it wasn't. I'm like, this is water. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? But anyway, 
But I, I think, you know, you go through all that stuff and you're running and running and it just gets that, it, it just built up that intensity. Yeah. And like, I'm going, oh, I could take this thing out. And I think that's what I really liked about it. Because I'm like, well, I got to jump over this, jump over this. And then I jump and a bus just hits me and takes me <laughs> out. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, there's a little bit different to this. It's You got to <laughs> right. shoot that thing, but you got to watch out for other stuff yeah. too. Um, but just visually wise, I thought that was really pretty, it was pretty sweet. Yeah, I thought it was a great moment. Um, yeah. As as a boss, is it one of the ten great bosses in video games? <laughs> definitely no, not. No, no, definitely no. not. But it fit the so- it fit the story well. I thought, and, and I really love the element after that when you're going up to the you know final end scenes of the game, and mm-hmm. you're is that where you're out of body? Uh, I, well, it's the one where you're using the flashlight to like the words are there. Yeah. Oh and yes. You're turning the words into yes, objects. Yes. 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 Which yes. I thought was a really neat and way the for them to goes. a really neat way for yeah. them to like show you how the like you're playing what's being written in the yeah. manuscript, mm-hmm. and you're just basically turning these words into actual objects. Right. Which is really cool. I thought it was a neat element. Yeah. And it's at that point that I just figured that the entire game, like the entire story of the game, was the story. Like yep. none of it was actually real. Yeah. And I have see, and and that that leads me to. To the or not real, real. <laughs> the final scenes that we've seen with, um, uh, I believe he meets up with Thomas Zane, um, yeah, in in the water, yeah, uh, and and he has that double show well, up. The mirror image is like clone, the, Mr. Scratch, because yeah. he's the one that's got the scratch on the head that's been going through everything. See, that's what I'm saying. So is Alan the entire time like still stuck in the in house the cabin, in the room writing. writing the story, and you've been playing as his quote unquote Mr. Scratch because. He sends him out at the end and says he's going to go see your friends. Yeah. So basically, the entire time, you know, Alan's been trapped in the cabin writing the story, mm-hmm. and you've been playing as Mister Scratch, quote unquote. Yeah. 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 That's, that's that's kind of how I saw which it, which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. That, that's how, that's my take on it. Obviously, I, I, the only thing I was confused about by the end is because it seems to give me mixed messages because it's like, oh, you defeated the tornado. Well, and and then it's like, okay, but you haven't fully defeated the darkness. That's fine. And then yeah. you go defeat the old lady with the power of love, mm-hmm. and then uh, you know, and then Huey Lewis and the news shows up. <laughs> that's totally what I wanted to have kick on when that light shoots out of her face. <laughs> it's the like, power of love. Dan, Dan, yeah. Dan, yeah, that would have been awesome. Um, <laughs> but then, but then you exchange yourself with, uh, you know, uh, with your wife, so she can come back. Well, and that's what they've been. Yeah, for, that's what they were. He was foreshadowing through the whole thing and talking about how a sacrifice. There's something has you can't have one live and the other one die. But then why defeat die. the old lady? Is my question. Well, I, I guess that's it's why debatable I, that he didn't defeat her, right? Exactly. Well, I then, mean, he shut her down. I guess that so. version or that entity guess, of the darkness. But I guess based on story cliches, and I expect you know a little bit of lead in where it's like, aha, we've won, and then you know then this realization, oh shit, we didn't win. Well, don't we get that because at the end he's like the whole thing, it's not a lake. Yeah, but he's he's exchanged himself by that point. But it, but he's exchanged himself for oh for so his that, wife because so that's the last thing and, that you see. Yeah, yeah. But he does the whole thing with the, you know, it's not an ocean, or it's, it's not, not a lake, like it's, it's an, an ocean, ocean, yeah. Which means that it's so much bigger than yeah. just this chick here that I had to, you know, Barbara that right, I had to take right. out or whatever. Right. Um, the, the sequence of events was just kind of weird for me. And it seems like they've replaced people. Like, so yeah. So now the, the, you know, because Rose is holding the lamp at the end. Yeah. And now Nightingale's standing in the background, and he's apparently the new evil source, the, the, the FBI guy. Well, FBI. Was, was that I, Nightingale? I thought that he was, was at the typewriter. Though. I thought that was the ranger dude. Oh, I thought it was night. I thought because I FBI thought that's guy. why they put her with Rose because Rose had a crush on him. I think it's FBI. I thought I thought it was I the couldn't. FBI guy that was a problem I had because I couldn't tell. And he's yeah. all being weird in the back window. Yeah. Well, I thought he was typing. I on. guess that could I be thought it. he was sitting at a typewriter the whole time. Could be. Who, See, Alan? Or... No, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Alan was, but no, it goes Rose and behind him in the window they show a guy and it's the FBI. I swear it's the FBI guy because I thought it was even on this jacket yeah. and he's typing away. Oh, he's, he's at a tight. He's at a tight. He was looking out the window, though, like at at the yeah, viewer, at the, parade. At the player. Uh, man, we all saw. That yeah, see, <laughs> see, hey, that's all right. Well, here's my issue with the end game: is that I'm okay with stories ending with questions, yeah. left hanging. But what I don't like is when the game throws new questions at you, yeah. and so many because there were. I felt like there are too many new questions. Well, that's the problem with a game that wants to do a sequel immediately, right? Because I'm like. Wait, why the hell is Rose the Light Lady? Who the hell is that dude back there? What does he even mean? You know, is he in the darkness? Is, See, is how I he took it, a guardian spirit? Because I couldn't tell if he was ominous or protective. Or... How I took it is he's the new incarnation of the the black, the dark presence or whatever, oh. and and it's the FBI agent guy. 
That's that's that was my interpretation okay. of what I saw. That, that makes I mean, a little it's more open sense for interpretation. Well, and and it was more confusing for me because I was thinking he was the ranger. Okay. Because I was trying to make an association with Rose there, um, and so and so I just felt like there are a lot of questions, uh, new questions being added. Mm-hmm. I don't mind questions lingering because yeah. that's fun. Yeah. Uh, it's sometimes being things being unexplained, and that brings me to one thing I definitely wanted to talk about, which is the very beginning of the game. So we're going to jump from the very end to the very <laughs> beginning. Very first thing is that quote from uh, Stephen King. About right, how right. a good horror story leaves some questions. How apologetic is that to start your game? <laughs> hey guys, you're going to be disappointed with the ending of this game. Guess what? Uh, that's just because you don't understand good storytelling. Good storytelling <laughs> is going to leave you asking questions. And I'm like, dude, could you cover your ass anymore? At seriously. The <laughs> I, well, and it telegraphed the ending. I'm like, okay, well, things are not going to be explained. Thanks. You well, know, I knew uh, that with the fact that it was like that kind of game. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, it's but like... it's still up in the air. I mean, you, you still are never quite sure. That's but, true. But that, I was sure. <laughs> it's like, I I didn't think. And again, you know, that feeds into this thing where you're you're looking at stories so closely you're mm-hmm. going to unveil things about your own story a little yeah. bit and yeah. it can be a little dangerous but i think they overall did it well it was just some you know, things weren't necessary something else about the end too um i'm not this is crazy i'm sure that people will think it's nuts but you're nuts um is is it possible that this is all thomas zane's story well see because there's really not cuz isn't the last page of possible. thomas zane's book introducing alan yeah yeah so where does that, I mean, because did Alan, or did Thomas Zane bring Alan in? Um, and it's like, I don't really know how that's I mean, going to play see, out. I mean, that's see why I was thinking he brought the FBI guy in. Who, Alan? Yeah, because the FBI guy gets taken, and either it was a character just made up, and that's why he was... Okay, well, see, so darkness. what's this? Let's say this. <laughs> Alan brings in the FBI. I love this brainstorm yeah. that we're mm-hmm. having here. Mm-hmm. Alan brings in this FBI agent because he needs to have the balance. Yeah. He needs to have... He needs gonna the adversity. Kill, he's going to kill the evil evil there, but he can't just kill the evil of Barbara right. and bring back Alice. He needs to bring in... He needs to kill the evil here, bring in a new guy to take the place of the evil he has so to, he has black he has and to, white. Because he has yeah. to have the darkness thinking that this is a story just to allow it to be more powerful. Exactly. Yeah. And so, so necessarily, maybe Alan isn't the sacrifice. It's he brings in a new evil element so that you know evil can fill in now but, the FBI guy to bring back Alan. How does this then come back to the Thomas Zane thing we're talking? Or does it? I don't know. Well, if it does okay. or not. no, no, just, no, because you, I, my you, brain's you were, filling. Oh, no, like filling were, out. it just brought up to the fact because Zane, had, well, his last page introduced a- Alan, right? Mm-hmm. So then the uh, then that would be Alan coming in to fill the shoes of what, him, essentially bringing mm-hmm. life to around there and all the darkness crap and all that stuff. But then Alan had to write an out, and he had to write it out. First, he sacrificed himself, which it was going to happen regardless. But he had to write another darkness, like you said. Yeah, I wonder if that's the case. I don't know. Because that one chick was like, I'm done being the guardian of the light, so now it's Rose. So Rose is a guardian, whoever's writing that story. So whatever's mm-hmm. taking place or the, making things okay, mm-hmm. or now it's an ocean. Who knows? The next yeah. one, now it's going to be... Maybe he's just writing his own sequel. He's like, this is awesome. <laughs> I actually like. I could well, sell thanks. this. Yeah. Well, because because that's what gets me is I don't I don't remember him showing up as one of the shadow guys. And usually anyone that's been was taking... he wasn't. You never find out what happened to Nightingale. And that's, the FBI guy. Yeah, is yeah. Because yeah. everybody... oh, you're right. Because everybody else, oh, good everybody point. else that you oh, ran into that becomes that. shadow guys, they've all been there. They you don't know, resolve the him at all. Like, Time to take your medicine and mm-hmm. you know all that mm-hmm. weird mm-hmm. stuff of that. Um, I love those voices, by the way. Yeah. When they had the like warped like. Oh yeah. You gotta go. Yeah. And I would I just laugh it. at the stuff. <laughs> Logging is a dangerous occupation. Yeah. <laughs> and I love the warping of it. Yeah. They got all sick sounding. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they don't explain whatever happened to Nightingale. You don't see his end, yeah, end game. So I'm wondering if that was just, I mean, he was just brought in to be his, Alan's out to save Alice. Right. The balance aspect. Yep. Because yeah. Alan's not going mean, to, I can't see Alan being the sacrifice because he's going to continue the story. And I think eventually he's going to get out. Of it, I mean, because they're going to continue the game. Yeah, I mean, this is a start. Well, this... I think he is the sacrifice because he couldn't defeat it. Like he has to keep writing. That's, mm-hmm. I think, that's what that last little scene is—is is him still writing. He's like, the only way I can contain this is to keep writing. That's why it's an ocean, not a lake. You know, it's not something small that I can contain. Right. Uh, Unless it... the darkness took over Nightingale to battle Alan with two other, another book. <laughs> There's two books now. They're going to fight the books. That's why. <laughs> Two genres are going to get take me. it because Nightingale is going to be like totally like sci-fi. And... Why did Why did Lamp Lady have to change? Nothing happened to old Lamp. She Lady. quit. She didn't want to do it anymore. She really? was done. When was that? 
Well, when she when he went and got the page and the oh, that's right. The she clicker, was like, I don't, she's have, like, to do I don't have to do this that's anymore. Right. I don't even yep. have to change the light bulbs anymore. Yep, and yep, why yep, have yep, it in that room with all those lights? I would have had a small room with like two big lights, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Just a small and light. The, the clicker thing. Just, there. The yeah, clicker exactly. thing. Exactly. That would be fine with that. Where'd that clicker thing come from, too? Because I'm trying to remember how that all like originated. Now it originated because of Al. Uh, Al- Alice, that's his wife. Yeah, uh-huh. Alice's fear of the dark, and so the flashback to the apartment, and so he's like, "This is something my mother gave me." Right, when but I was we, but, and then he questioned maybe the fact that he made that up, right? Like, yeah, like as a story element, yes. just to get it into the into the game or yeah. into the story. Yeah. So it or that he not made it up happen. for her. Yeah, I mean, it's just like how did he it, get the clicker? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He wrote it in, and yeah. maybe he made up that memory too. He doesn't. I don't think he was clear on that. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, All then right. when they made it, the fact that the one that's been you've been controlling the whole time was actually not Alan Wake and Mr. Scratch. Yeah. And that was a little bit. I was like, Deadly what? Premonition. That's a weird. WTF, man. WTF. Deadly Premonition. We need to, you need to finish Deadly Premonition. Yes, so you do. do that talk. No, I'll still sit in on that talk. I'll tell you what. I, you can watch me play it. I'll play it. But it had, <laughs> I'll tell you, in the, in the little bit that I played of Deadly Premonition mm-hmm. and what you guys talked about, it really felt like. When I was playing Alan Wake, it almost had... Yeah, it, there are a lot of harmonies. Yeah. And, the, the thing is, too, that a lot of people... But there are a lot of different things. I see a lot of people claiming the whole Twin Peaks thing about Alan Wake, mm-hmm. and I don't get that vibe at all. It's, it's, it doesn't have the quirkiness that that no, does. Yeah. It, it has... I mean, it's this is got a the supernatural. Lamp yeah, and that's about it. Yeah. This has got the supernatural aspect that was really... I mean... It, it was hinted at. Twin Peaks was quirky yeah. and weird, mm-hmm. yeah. and that's what Deadly Premonition has. So if you want right. that Twin Peaks experience, like play Deadly that game yeah. because that is messed up and weird, yeah. and that is just weird for weirdness' sake. And I didn't get that in Alan Wake at all. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I agree. it was really straightforward. There were and a couple, pedestrian. There were a couple of quirky characters, but like the Anderson brothers were kind of explained out. Mm-hmm. You know, I even, love those guys. Even though. the lamp lady yeah. was a little bit explained, although I never figured out how she didn't burn the hell out of her arms holding that lamp like that. <laughs> Seriously, around she was holding the glass. Like, oh yeah, that's right. She was holding onto it by the glass. I'm like, supernatural man. What the hell? Uh, I love the one other tidbit about the Anderson brothers, and I love that like you read that page about him having the hammer and like bringing it down. Yeah, and then it goes to that scene of them sitting in the in the, the hospital, and he's got that like uh, the like squeaky, squeaky hammer. hammer, and I thought that was brilliant. Well, like, and, I thought and, that, that was and really then great. later during the the breakout, and you see that that metal hammer sitting next to he the does, nurse. Yeah, he does so really you, use you, it. you're like. Oh shit! <laughs> it's getting real over there. <laughs> but I love that little squeaky one because I thought that was a really that neat was touch. Hilarious, yeah. Where you just see how crazy they are, I agree. and they they call him Tom at the beginning too. They call Alan Tom when he first comes into the uh, diner. Yeah, yeah. So there's a whole other weird thing. Yeah. Because that was like in the first thing, and they're like, oh. "Hey, Tom!" Like they recognize him. Yeah. yeah. So that's weird. Yeah. I don't and you know never what... ever get to see. I never know. See, and that. that's what gets me because because I... some writers write with you know. Pseudonyms? Pseudonyms. Yeah. <laughs> I, you said it, and then I tried to say it myself. That was the worst thing I could I was do. I busy getting coconut started on jukebox to notice. Oh, <laughs> to notice I love the fact that I got... Because I, I played it again, and I, one of the achievement <laughs> popped up. I'm like, sweet. But I still wasn't going to play it. You're going to play it anyway? <laughs> yeah. Because I sat there and listened. I, that's, that's... Yeah. Well, they've said, you know, that this is the first part. I mean, they envision yeah. like multiple seasons, quote unquote, for mm-hmm. the game, um, and that this is season one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know they have DLC coming um, already. They have like three of them planned. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some are going to be prequel, some are going to be in the future, or bridge the gap between this and the mm-hmm. next game too. So, yeah. I guess we'll see. Hopefully, it doesn't take them six years to make it. So, I also do. So, all the episodes of Bright Falls, the sort of prequel. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, are available on the video marketplace for free. Um, I need to watch the rest of them now. Yeah, yeah. So you know, they're they're pretty low budget and and. Uh, they tend to lean on the weirder side, so those were definitely they're harder more Twin to Peaks understand. Yeah, to me. Well, except more, except dark without the humor of Twin Peaks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, think think of more of a David Lynch film rather mm-hmm. than Twin Peaks. But yes, um, and the, you do see the psychiatrist. Uh, he appears in there. It does suggest, you know, that he's, you know, he knows about the darkness already, and he's been trying to do these sorts of things uh, to get find people who can sort of control the darkness because he's not a creative person himself um and but yeah but it doesn't really spoil anything which is nice good because it good. um you know if i i watched it after i played the game okay. if i watched it before i played the game i don't th- i would have known there's something up i would have known there's something dangerous in the woods mm-hmm. um i would have known that this psychiatrist guy was shady and all that but it, it wouldn't be absolutely clear because uh, it follows this journalist who's just in town for some fluff piece uh, 
to, to write this piece, but he can't leave the town. Like every time he tries to leave, he like blacks out and wakes up like in the woods naked or oh, okay. back in his apart back in his hotel and cool. things like that. And so he, you know, he's trying to get some people to drive him out of town because like he, he can't leave. <laughs> so you know, and so it, it does a nice job of setting up the atmosphere without really spoiling anything. Cool. cool. So I, I do recommend. I'll need to check the rest of them out. They're they're, they're pretty good. So awesome. Are we all tapped out on Alan Wake? Is anybody so. else got anything story wise they want to talk about? I, I like how we I barely we talked about all. gameplay at all because there's not much no. to talk about. Mm-mm. It's we've, we've covered it's that. pretty repetitive. Yeah. If you want to hear our gameplay discussion on it, then episode forty four and forty five will get yeah. you covered. Yeah. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. But all around, it's I just I don't know. A price drop would might get me a little bit more enticed to 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 pick it up mm-hmm. and play and, it again and, and play it again and try this DLC and maybe because I just you know it's eight. You know, probably the, around ten bucks for DLC. Oh yeah, yeah. to continue on. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's something definitely to be said about the DLC factor selling yeah. the game yeah. and making it a you know more of a purchase. Mm-hmm. That's so, true. And so, I, I mean, think that they include with the game a uh, code for the first DLC. It's going to be free. Oh, if, you have, if you have the game, so. nice. Well, that'd be another <laughs> incentive. Yeah. yeah, it is. That is. Well, cool. But I mean, it was just a. It was a neat take. I, I just thought it was something. It's just something I've never played. I like something played it before. I've I like games that make me like think. That. Yeah. Um. And and it made me think at the end where it's not so much like a Silent Hill game where I can't mm-hmm. piece things together. I right. mean, obviously there's a story in here. You just got to dig for it. You, you yeah. got you got some puzzle pieces. You may not have enough, but right. you're not even sure whether you have enough. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, I, and what harken back what we talked about at the beginning of the show is it's that kind of element of storytelling where they can just pretty much do whatever they want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if they say they leave it open-ended and they can really go from anywhere that they mm-hmm. want to mm-hmm. and say, well, this is part of the writing or it's not. So. Yeah. The the thing about gameplay, I just, the two things mm-hmm. I really enjoyed, like we had talked about when you're shining a light in the words, but there was that other part where you're following yourself going up to the yeah, cabin. The, that's the out of body experience. The, yeah. That one I thought was really neat too. There was like those little aspects that they threw in and were something different for me for gameplay on a video game that just really, I think engrossed me in the story even more. And I think that's, I think that's why I enjoyed it that much more. Yeah, I totally glossed over it when you said that before about the out of body experience. Yeah. I really like that level too, mm-hmm. or that like part where you kind of get to watch things happen from yeah. afar. And did like, you guys run down cool. to the end of the dock the first time? Hell yeah, <laughs> I did too. But then, <laughs> but you can just watch from up on the, the OCD. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like I gotta run down to everywhere I can go just in case there's something down there. Oh yeah. But you can see yourself splashing around if you stay up there. Oh, really? Yeah, because it, it's one of those focus things. Okay. Okay. I dislike the fact that you have to hold down the goddamn thing for focus. Yeah. Because it's holding down that button. Now, hitting that button is not a problem. Holding it down on a joystick, though, yeah. would wiggle out and so I'd zoom out and zoom back in, <laughs> zoom out, zoom back in. I'm used zoom to Zoom out, it. zoom back in. And I'm like, just make it on off. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, I had to, the, my worst problem was that. they were long that, focuses. I kept hitting the right because I don't know L from R. <laughs> And I'm like, it's not doing shit. Are you holding up your, making the L in your hand? No, that's when I kind of looked at it, like when it popped up again, I'm like, you are an idiot. And I just was just looking, I'm just like, you don't know what you're that's doing. That's hilarious. That's awesome. Because there's some really neat stuff to look at. I thought that was cool that it'd pull your mind, pull your attention to something else. And yeah, really good. It was awesome. It, it last was a thing solid I, game. Last thing I would say about the game is Bright Falls is the best goddamn radio station on the planet. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? <laughs> Although that dude's on all night, every yeah, that night. Guy works, How the hell do you do that? That, works, that guy works killer hours, man. <laughs> He's nonstop. How the hell do you do that? Anyway. Especially when you said that you'd be at home and sleeping. I'm like, when are you sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, not like this. I wish I was at home sleeping. Right. I'm like, but you're doing a show. You're <laughs> all the, the night radio guy. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Well, cool. Glad we all enjoyed it. Yes. Uh, if you guys at home have comments, thoughts, suggestions, think that we're talking out our ass about some yeah, of those interpretations, <laughs> interpretations. That we missed, yeah. uh, we'd love to hear it. You can mm-hmm. email us at comments at signedinpodcast.com or feel free to jump on our forums. Yeah, we should start as, a spoiler thread. Yeah, when this we'll comes definitely out. do that. Um, as you can go to signedinpodcast.com. Um, you can get a link to our forums from there, um, as well as all of our other shows mm-hmm. and everything else. So we'd love to hear from you guys, your thoughts on the game as well. All right. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank yeah. you. We'll be back in a week. Later. Ha-ha. Wow. wow. That's weird.
Copyright 2010. Good night.